Well, good evening. This is Hound Dog Steve wishing you a very pleasant evening and welcome back to the channel on this uh, very chilly February evening. And uh, this is a bit of a follow up to yesterday's video about uh, uh, the police uh, getting into a tangle with the uh, firefighters in France and um, basically firing water cannons and tear gas at them. And so uh, I've come across two articles. One is about the UN is actually um, investigating the violence that's being used by the French police against the protesters. And also another one which is questioning whether France, uh, certainly the government, is at war with its own people. And to all intents and purposes, it would appear that way. Anyway, this is a very short introduction because, uh, as I say, they are two reasonably long articles. I hope you'll stay with them to the end because I think they're fairly interesting and um, they do paint a picture of what we could be looking at down the track uh, if we don't start paying attention uh, to exactly what is happening on the ground because uh, all of these things that happen, uh, these are actually tests. These are test cases and uh, the powers that be are always watching to see the results, to see how the public react, uh, to see how many people are going to stand up, how many people are going to oppose. And there are people analysing this stuff. You know, just the same as, uh, you know, when armies uh, go into other countries, go into battles and so on and so forth, uh, they have logistics people, they have analysts sitting down, coming up with all kinds of data and logistics about what they may run into, what equipment they need, and uh, when something happens, they analyze the response. Well, the same thing is happening here. So uh, I think it's uh, certainly a couple of interesting articles, and I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. Anyway, let's just pop over to those, and I'll come back and do a very quick wrap-up. Okie dokie. Here we go. And this from Spiked. The French government is at war with the people. Macron's assault on living standards and liberty cannot be ignored any longer. And uh, these are the firefighters on strike. For the past year or so, a rumour on social media keeps resurfacing. Many British Facebook and Twitter users believe that our government has taken out a D-notice to ban broadcasters and newspapers from covering the protest movements in France. Thanks to social media, footage of the Gilets jaunes protesters, and in particular of the violent beatings they have endured at the hands of the French police, has been spreading around the world for the past year. The British public, so often smeared as insular and parochial, wants to know what's been happening in France, though many feel that the media is not giving this crisis the attention it deserves. It's a similar story with the ongoing strikes against Emmanuel Macron's pension reforms. The strikes began on the 5th of December last year, when more than 800,000 people marched across the country against a new streamlined pension system. The modern and simplified system proposed by Macron's government would conveniently erase the benefits and arrangements that have arisen from decades of industrial disputes to replace it with a smaller, one-size-fits-all package. And this is what I've been saying all along. Thank you very much. It is the longest strike movement since 1968. This all the more impressive when you take into account the current weakness of the unions. The proportion of workers affiliated to a union is roughly half what it was in the 70s. Some direct action has had a major impact. Planes have been grounded, schools have shut their gates, trains have been cancelled and power has been cut. And while footage of striking firemen, lawyers and ballerinas is practically unmissable on Twitter, the UK's rolling 24-hour news channels haven't felt moved to broadcast much of it. The problem with the French strikes and the Yellow Vest movement is that they disrupt the prevailing narrative. Britain, Italy, Hungary and Poland are supposed to be the wayward European countries which have fallen to the dreaded populism. France, on the other hand, is run by a liberal centrist Europhile, the kind of person the media class would like to have running Britain, ideally from inside the EU. The fact that the French people are rising up in their hundreds of thousands against the media's class's preferred mode of government is not something that is ever seriously reckoned with. The sad truth is that the British media do not need to be coerced through state authoritarianism to ignore or downplay the French revolts. They do it of their own accord. When Macron was elected in 2017, he was widely fated as the saviour of France, but many of his reforms have faced bitter opposition on the streets. One thing that has become clear over the past few years is that Macronism is almost too perfect an example of the neoliberal assault on the people. 
First, the government takes actions which would further erode already faltering or flatlining living standards, whether that was the proposed green taxes which sparked the first yellow vest uprisings, or the current raid on pensions. Then when the people protest and strike against these changes, the police beat them up. Centrist authoritarianism assaults both living standards and liberty. Over the past few weeks, this has led to the bizarre situation where two wings of the emergency services have had to battle it out on the streets. Firefighters have endured beatings, tear gas and rubber bullets from the police. Some firefighters have set their own fireproof jackets alight to draw attention to their cause. They are asking for a salary premium to acknowledge the risk of their jobs and for changes to their pensions to be scrapped. Police officers, on the other hand, already have this salary premium and are exempt from Macron's pension cuts. They know where their bread is buttered. The French public may be overwhelmingly opposed to the pension reforms and overwhelmingly favourable to the strikers, but with the might of the state against them, the people will have their work cut out for them. People outside of France must do more to assist them in that work. And there you have it. There you have it. Uh, it is absolutely appalling the way the people are being treated in France. But as I say, uh, look at the actions, not at the words of the leaders, look at the actions. Because this is how you will be dealt with under globalism. Uh, it's staring you in the face that France is at war with its own population. And this from TRT World. French police brutality now subject to international inquiry. And this is a follow-up to yesterday's video uh, about the police uh, attacking peaceful firefighters uh, in uh, protesting in Paris uh, with water cannons and tear gas grenades. Is France finally being scrutinized for the violence perpetrated on Yellow Vest protesters? The United Nations opened a formal inquiry into the use of police violence against France for the treatment of the Yellow Vest protesters. The UN High Commissioner on Human Rights, Michel Bachelet, and former Chilean President compared the use of force in France to that seen in protests in Sudan and Haiti. She said, in income, wealth, access to resources, and access to justice constitute fundamental challenges to the principles of equality, dignity, and human rights for every human being. She also urged the government to continue an open dialogue with the protesters. The Yellowvest have been protesting for more than 23 weeks on issues related to economic and political rights and have been met mainly with violent retaliation from armed forces. Amnesty International issued a statement late last year highlighting police use rubber bullets, sting ball grenades and tear gas against largely peaceful protesters who did not threaten public order and the organisation has documented numerous instances of excessive use of force by police. Injuries recorded included loss of limbs, damage and complete loss of sight, deafness, facial disfigurement, among many others. As of December 2018, approximately 1,500 people were injured, 50 seriously. More recent but conservative estimates from the government put the numbers at 1,700 with an additional 1,000 police officers injured since the protests began. The French government's numbers have not been independently verified. Different local organisations put the number of injured between 2,000 and 3,000. A childcare worker from Normandy, north of Paris, explains how her two sons have been permanently damaged by the police during the protests. Not only have they suffered severe physical damage permanently disabling them, but she says the physical damage was acute, but so is the psychological damage. Any noise makes me jump now, even the sound of a plastic bottle being crushed. I can't look at images of the police on TV. My son has holes in his forehead. He can't look at his mutilated hand. My other son will have shrapnel in his body for life as it's too dangerous to remove all of it. We feel totally alone. We haven't heard from the state. It's as if we don't exist. Despite launching investigations into allegations of abuse and brutality, the response from the French government has been relatively weak. French government representative Benjamin Griveaux responds to the UN High Commissioner. We have always been extremely clear about it. Every time it was necessary, investigations were launched. It is surprising, however, to find us listed between Venezuela and Haiti, where have been the deaths. Problematic culture. More surprising still is the representative of one of the leading democracies in the world implies that only if death is the outcome is a human rights abuse investigation necessary. 
However, despite his defence, estimates put the deaths between 15 to 20 people a year dying in police custody. And while the number is decreasing annually, there is an increase in severe injuries inflicted amongst those in custody. The crowd control techniques enforced by the French forces on protesters were previously used in the refugee camp of Calais, where it is estimated that a thousand human rights violations were recorded. The use of rubber bullets and smoke grenades caused similar injuries to those suffered by the LMS protesters today. Some reports highlight that these practices have traditionally been used against invisible communities throughout France for quite some time. Large crowd control situations are not the only place where police powers are going unchecked. In recent years, several high-profile cases brought to the forefront the extent of unauthorized police force. It comes as little surprise that the majority of these violations are inflicted on minorities, peoples of color. Almost three years after the death of the young Adam Treor, little progress has been made in the case with his family still waiting to find out the police's role in his death. Law enforcement says that the young black man died due to asphyxiation from pre-existing conditions such as sickle cell anemia. However, his family and many in the general public believe this to be false. Traore's sister says on the recent progress made, we are relieved. We've been calling for the truth for nearly three years now, and today four eminent experts have written in black and white that his death was due to asphyxiation, that the gendarmes were responsible for Adam Traore's death, and that the technique used in his arrest led to his asphyxia. We have all the elements to put them on trial and get a conviction. The face-down apprehension technique discussed here is banned in the EU except for France. The family is waiting on the courts to hear whether they can seek justice against the gendarmes force, they are hopeful. Other high profile cases against the French armed forces include the sodomy of a young boy held and violated in police custody, Theo Lohanka, in what is known locally as the Theo Affair. Protests consumed the suburbs of France and the anger from marginalised communities was clearly felt. The French president at the time, François Hollande, met Theo at his hospital bedside in a highly publicised visit. It is vital that efforts to scrutinise police practices are made continuously to keep law enforcement from breaching its limits. All this, and we have yet to consider the random stop and search policies implemented at the police's discretion throughout the country, the intimidation and seizure techniques used and the disproportionate punishment applied for similar crimes committed by people of different ethnicities. Aside from the hot water Macron continues to find himself in each Saturday as the protests take place across the country, now at long last some international attention is being placed on the brutish police force of a country that prides itself on liberty, equality and fraternity. We can only hope the investigations underway convict guilty officers and set examples for others, or France at the very least must dismount from its moral high horse. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, please like, comment and subscribe below, and please, please uh, share this video, um, put it into playlists, anything that you like. Uh, the algorithm uh, from YouTube is messing around with my videos and they're not being shared as widely as I would like or would hope. So if you could share these videos, I would really, really appreciate that. Uh, it'll certainly help me and um, get the word out. Okay, in the meantime, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off, wishing you a very pleasant evening and we'll talk very, very shortly. See you now. Take care. Bye.